Today we're going to be graphing linear equations in the form y equals mx. So this week we've looked a lot at this equation y equals mx. So remember the m, that variable, represents the slope of the line. All right, and we discussed that the slope is the difference in the y's over the difference in the x, or it's the rise over the run. Okay, it's the vertical change over the horizontal change. So we're going to use the fact that m is the rise over the run to take these equations and graph them and find the line that this equation represents. So let's go ahead and look at the first one here. y equals 3 fifths x. First let's identify what our slope is. Our slope in this equation, of every equation, is the number in front of the x. So in this case it is 3 fifths. That's our slope, 3 over 5. So this means then that we have a rise of 3 and a run of 5. So since it's a positive 3, that means we're going to go up 3. And since it's a positive 5, that means we are going to go to the right 5 for our run. Now in all of these equations, we are going to have a starting point at the origin. That's where we're going to start all of our graphs today. The reason for that, if you remember when we did the tables, that every single graph in this form, y equals mx, went through the origin. Because there's be nothing being added or subtracted to the end of any of these, every one of these is going to go through the origin. Because if I plug the x value of 0 in, anything times 0 will give me a y value of 0. So this will always be our starting point for all of these equations in this form today. And from that starting point of 0, 0, we're going to apply our slope. So from that point, I'm going to go up 3, 1, 2, 3, and then to the right, 5. Don't put a dot here. Wait till you go to the right, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and then that's where my second point goes. And then we want to do it again. You want at least three points before you draw your line. So I'm going to go again, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And there's my third point on this line. Notice how they lay in this straight line. We're graphing linear equations. So if you get a point that's not on the line, you need to recheck your work. Now let's say my graph here that I was graphing on was too small and this point could not fit on here. Well, I know I need three points, so if I could not fit this on, what I could do instead is do the complete opposite of these two. Instead of going up 3, I would go down 3. Instead of going to the right 5, I could go to the left 5. As long as you do the opposite of both, you'll still get a point on the line. So I could go 1, 2, 3 down, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 to the left now. Now notice how that is right on the line with the rest of them. So if I could not plot this point, instead of going up and to the right, I could go down and to the left and still be on that line. Now after I have at least three points, I would take my line and go right through the middle of those points there. And there's my line there of the equation y equals 3 fifths x. All right, let's take a look at the next one now. My next equation is y equals 3x. Again, the first thing I want to do is identify my slope. So my slope here is 3. Now, slope is rise over run. We always want to write it as a fraction. So remember, if I have a whole number, to write it as a fraction, I can just put it over 1. So my slope then is 3 over 1. Since I have a positive 3, my rise is going to be up 3. Since I have a positive 1 for my run, I'm going to go to the right 1. So we can go ahead and graph this. Again, I'm going to start at the origin, then I'm going to go up 1, 2, 3, to the right 1. Up 1, 2, 3, 
to the right one. Now I have three points, but I'm going to do one more because the more points you have, the easier it will be to draw on your line. One, two, three, to the right one. Then I would take my line here and we're going to go ahead and draw that in. And there's my line right there representing the equation y equals 3x. So rise of 3 and a run of 1. Again we could have done the complete opposite if I would have gone down 3 and to the left 1, notice how I still get a point on that line. Alright, let's do the next one here. y equals negative one-third x. So again, let's identify my slope. My slope here is negative one-third. Now I always pull the negative in with the numerator. You could make the denominator negative, but not both. Either one, either the top's negative or the bottom's negative. Not both. So I always just keep it the top just to keep it the same. Now since the 1 is negative on top for my rise, I'm going to go down 1 now. But the 3 is positive, so that means I'm still going to go to the right, 3. So I'm going to put my point, my starting point in the origin. Now I'm going to go down 1 and to the right, 1, 2, 3. Down 1, 1, 2, 3 to the right. Again, I'm going to do it one more time. Down one, one, two, three to the right. The more points I have, the easier it will be for me to draw on my line. So now I'm going to go ahead and draw the best line I can through these. And there's my line. Representing the equation, y equals negative one-third x. All right, let's take a look at this last equation here. So this last one is y equals negative x. Now let's identify our slope. So now I just have y equals negative x. So I just have that negative in front. Well, remember if there's no number in front of the x, there's always an imaginary 1 there. So this is really a negative 1. This is y equals negative 1x. So just like up here with the 3, to make it a fraction, I have to put it over 1. So my slope then for this equation is negative 1 over 1. So my rise then, being negative 1, tells us we are going to go down 1. Our run then, being a positive 1, tells us we are going to go to the right 1. So let's go ahead and graph this now. I'm going to put my starting point at the origin. We're going to go down one to the right one, down one to the right one, down one to the right one, and so on. I could do this all the way till I run out of graph paper. I'm going to stop right about there. And let's go ahead and draw in our graph here, draw in our line. And there we go. There's our line then that represents this equation, y equals negative x. So remember, if it's just an x, there's always an imaginary 1 in front of it. And the same goes, as I talked about up here, how you could do the complete opposite. Of course, I'm not going to run out of graph paper here with this, but I could go, instead of down 1, I could go up 1 and to the left 1. Do the complete opposite of both of those, and I would still be on that graph, up one into the left one. So keep that in mind just in case you run out of graph paper. You can do the complete opposite to get a third point. I hope this helps. If you have any questions, please let me know.